Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna to be doing a quick tutorial on how I make my vinyl project bags. I recently made a video on another project bag that doesn't include the vinyl, but this is my vinyl version. Um, I'm gonna be making a slightly bigger version than what I normally make today. Um, just to kind of have two different sizes, but I will be sharing both sizes down in the description box if you're interested, okay? My last video was pretty long, so this one I'm gonna try to keep it short and sweet and go from there, okay? Um, here's an example of one that I made. This is the smaller version, so the one we're making right now is gonna be slightly bigger. It's gonna be about um, two inches taller and wider. So here is the example piece. It has the vinyl in the front. It has binding and the back. Okay, so I'm gonna quickly go over the um, measurements that you will need. Again, though, I will leave it down below. The measurements I'm providing you right now are for the bigger bag, okay? So not this one, this one's a little bit different. So you will need your lining and interfacing. You can use whatever interfacing you like. I'm using fleece, fusible fleece. So this is gonna actually be my lining, which is considered the background area here. So right here on this bag, I did a print, but over here I'm gonna be doing a solid color, okay? So for this, you're gonna need 13 by 10, so 13 inches long by 10 inches wide. In case you're doing like a directional print, make sure that the width for this bag is 13 inches by 10 inches, and then you're gonna cut the, the interfacing the same exact size, okay? So I'm gonna put that aside. You're also gonna need two strips of fabric, which are going to be the area on top and on the bottom of the zipper, okay? You're gonna need a 13 and a half by two and a 13 and a half by four, okay? So you're gonna need two strips, okay? So for this bag, I made the background, or I made the lining, uh, with a print and then I made the strips up on top and the binding in the back I made that solid so for this bag that I'm making now I'm doing the opposite so I'm gonna be doing solid for the lining and then I'm gonna be doing a print for the strips and the back with the binding okay hope that makes sense you could switch it up however you like okay you're gonna need a zipper that's at least 14 inches long and you're gonna want vinyl. Um, there are different quality vinyls. I will link below the one that I have and the one that I personally love and recommend because it's, you know it's not too expensive, but it's it's good quality. Okay. So for the vinyl, you're gonna need 13 and a half by nine. And then the last piece you're gonna need is the back of the fabric. This is gonna be the back and the binding, okay? And this is gonna be a 15 by 12. So, you're gonna need the back, 15 by 12. You're gonna need your two strips, um, which are 13 and a half by four, 13 and a half by two. Your vinyl, 13 and a half by nine. Your lining and interfacing, 13 by 10. And the finished size of the bag is gonna be equivalent to the lining and the interfacing, which is gonna be 13 by 10, just for a quick reference. And your zipper, and we're ready to go. I have my um, iron set here. We're gonna start off with the strips of fabric. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab the two strips of fabric. So for this shorter strip, the two inch strip, right? 13 and a half by two. I'm just gonna go ahead and fold this in half and give it an iron. I like that this bag doesn't use a ton of fabric like the other bag does. I feel like the other bag just takes a little more effort, more cutting, but this one, um, I, I like it, it seems to go by quicker. So now that I have um, 
ironed the two inch strip, I'm gonna go to the four inch and I'm gonna iron that in half. And then I'm gonna open that and then I'm gonna iron this area to the middle. So the edge to the middle of that center crease that you just made. Okay, so it should be looking like this. And then you're gonna fold the top edge to the middle as well so that they meet. And then you'll fold it again to enclose that. So this is what you should have. This is the folded edge here and when you open it you have the two other ends enclosed in here. I hope you're able to see that. So now you're gonna have those two strips ready to go, ready, ready to be um, so to the zipper okay okay so next we're gonna go ahead and sew the zipper onto the two strips of fabric so I'm gonna change this out I currently have a walking foot on here but I'm going to apply my zipper foot So if you don't have a zipper foot, you could go ahead and just use a regular, your regular foot. Um, you don't have to get too close to the zipper in this for this bag, which is nice because it's technically not going to have a lining on the inside. So you want to make sure that your zipper tab is on the left side and you're going to get this is important, you're gonna get your two inch strip, the one that's only folded in half, and apply it to the top area. Just being sure that it's centered in between the tabs, um, the metal stopper. I just wanna put it right before the metal stopper so eventually I'll cut that off. Okay, and then make sure the other side is right before that metal stopper as well. So I'm just going to go ahead, I'm not even going to pin it down, I'm just going to go ahead and make sure that the folded edge, okay, the folded edge is against the teeth and the opening should be on this other side, okay. So that way it looks like a nice clean finish and then I'm simply going to stitch, I'll do a little back stitch. And I'm just gonna try to get as close as I can, you know, maybe an eighth of an inch, and just sew all the way down. Okay, this zipper tooth is, um, or the zipper foot is small enough to continue going without adjusting the zipper, but if you don't have a zipper foot, you just leave your needle uh, down, raise your presser foot, and just move the zipper out of the way and then you can continue okay so this is what it's looking like hope you could see that okay and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab your other strip, your four inch strip, and again, make sure that the folded edge is against the zipper and that the open edge is down here at the bottom. And you're gonna try to line it, line the edges with the strip that you just stitched. So you're just gonna kinda line that up. Again, I'm gonna move the zipper. 
kind of line up the two top edges. And actually, I think it might be easier to do it this way. So I'm gonna just line up those edges. Do a back stitch at the beginning and the end. Okay, so this is how it's looking. So next what you're gonna to wanna to do is grab your vinyl and you're gonna take your 13 and a half inch length side and lay it right in between this area that opens. Okay, so this should be your four inch strip that you sewed on. Your zipper pull should be on your left and you're simply gonna put this right in between so that it butts up against that seam that you just pressed. And, and I know it's hard to see because it's vinyl, but it should be enclosed within this, this area here. And then you wanna ensure that the edges are meeting up with the edges of the strip of fabric. So I hope that makes sense. And then you're simply, I'm just gonna use my same foot and I'm just gonna sew right along this edge here. And that is gonna hold the vinyl to the bag. It's gonna secure it in place. Again, just make sure it's butt up against the seam on the inside. So let me see if I could show you. So it's all the way up to this part here, okay? And it kinda tends to wanna fall out. You don't want to add pins to your vinyl because they'll put holes in it. If you want, you could um, you could put a wonder clip on one end to, just to ensure it doesn't move. And then I'm carefully going to stitch along the bottom here. Okay, and there you go. Now, because my zipper foot is so thin, I don't seem to have any issues sewing down here because uh, I know a lot of people have issues because of the vinyl it tends to want to get stuck. So if you have that problem, you could simply place this down, which this is the paper that comes with all vinyls. From my knowledge, they always come with the vinyls. And then you would just sew as usual and it should help. And then you, this just peels right off. When you're done, you just peel it right off. That's just a quick tip. But So this is how it's looking so far, okay? Okay, now we're back over here. And what we're gonna do is we're going to iron the lining fabric onto the fusible fleece. Okay, if you have a batting, you could go ahead and spray baste it on. Otherwise, you could just go ahead and iron this. So if you're using fusible fleece or any type of fusible interfacing, you want the, the bumpy side facing up because that is the glue. And then you want the fabric wrong side down so that the pretty side is up. And you just give that an iron. Okay, now that is together. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna lay the part that we just put together, the interface, or I'm sorry, the lining with the interface, and we're gonna lay that pretty side up. We're gonna lay this that we worked on lay it right over top and I want the zipper on the left and I also want the top edge of this area and this area to be meeting. So we just line up those top edges, make sure that it's sent this is centered so I know it's kind of hard to see but there is about 
a half inch on the edges, or actually a quarter of an inch left over on the edges and about half an inch on the bottom. I purposely made this top area a little bit bigger so we could trim it down. I wanna make sure that you can see. So if you could see, there's a quarter inch hanging off. So what I wanna do is I wanna line up this to the top of this line here, just to make sure that it's even. And then the bottom area, I wanna line that up with the line underneath here just to make sure that that's on a line and the top is on the line. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my ruler and let's move this over. And I'm gonna line that up with a number three because I've already lined up the bottom area. I don't wanna cut the bottom. Uh, okay, I wanna make sure I'm, line, I'm wording that correctly. You do not want to cut this um, lining fabric okay you just want to cut right against it so that you're trimming the top area here so you're just going to line that up and just cut that. okay so what you're going to want to do this cutting mat is a little small so i i flipped it so that you're able to see i placed the long edge against the long edge of the cutting mat so i could cut properly so I'm lining up the top edge here and the, top, the side edge here since this was where, where we started and this is the top area that we already cut. We know that those two are even. So now we're going to go ahead and cut, cut off the excess vinyl that's right here, which is about a half an inch. Again, you're not wanting to really cut into that bottom fabric, okay? And then we're gonna to repeat to the other side. Well, let me turn this around. And I'm lining up all the edges. And I'm gonna make sure that your zipper is on the inside. You do not wanna cut that, okay? And then you're gonna go ahead and cut off the excess here. So now what you should have are all edges nice and even and all matching up, okay? So now what we want to do I'm going to, to make it easier, I'm going to remove this top part now. We know that it matches up and we'll place it back after. We're gonna move that aside and we're just gonna work with the, um, the lining fabric and the backing. So you're gonna take your backing and you're gonna face that down. Wrong, so the right side, the pretty side, you're gonna face it down And then you're gonna place this lining fabric up. So the lining with the fusible interfacing, we're gonna face that up. And then the backing, we're gonna face it down. Now you wanna make sure that your backing is for the 15 inches going wide, okay? So 15 inches by 12 inches tall. So now what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have an inch all the way around. You're gonna to wanna to center this. Now the way that I do it is I just line this up this backing fabric, I line it up here and I will grab my ruler and kind of m match it up to that, let me see, to that one inch so that there is one inch here and then I make sure that this is lined up on the edges to a, any one inch mark, okay? So then I'm just gonna place this right here. So I'm going to butt it up against this ruler and then I'm going to line it up to the one inch mark so that there is one inch. And then if all your measurements were cut correctly, then you don't even have to really do this other, the other parts because they should be, they should all be matching up correctly. So at, all the way around should be about one inch. And I mean, personally, 
this is cut a tiny bit less and this is cut a tiny bit more I could see it so I'm just gonna shift it a, t a tiny bit but it should be fine okay it's not perfect it's fine so now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna carefully without moving it lift it and putting on put it onto my ironing board here okay and then what you're gonna want to do is fold all the edges against so that the edge is right against the the fabric okay so right against the lining fabric so you're gonna go ahead and just iron that all the way around so what we're doing now is the binding So now what we're going to do is we're going to take this and put it back onto the top. Now remember you want the zipper on the left side. Okay, you're going to want to line that back up. And then you're going to take your wonder clips and we're going to start putting the binding into place. Okay, so let me show you how to do that. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and start on this side here where the zipper is. It's just preference. You could start wherever you like. So just to start off, I'm gonna go ahead and take this folded edge and just start holding this into place. Okay, because we're gonna end up stitching all this down. So we just wanna hold it into place. Remember not to use pins because you'll mess up the vinyl. You'll put holes in it actually this shifted on me a little bit so we got to be careful that this is okay okay now this is how you do the mitered corner so that it's a nice corner okay let me see if I could get you closer okay so what you would want to do is you will take this this side that you're working on okay now this is a little tricky because of the zipper so this is wanting to open and get in the way so we're just gonna kind of hold that in place so we're gonna fold this over Okay, we'll go ahead and put a clip here just to kind of hold it even more. And on this side, even though you've already ironed it, you're going to open that up. Okay, and then right at this edge, you're just going to take this and fold it in on itself like that and just give it a finger press. And then you will go onto that original um, crease and just fold that over again. Okay, and so it should be looking like this. And then you're simply going to bring that over. So you're gonna fold that over now. So it should give you this pretty mitered corner. And then I just hold it right there with a the clip. And then I will kind of turn this around. This little string is bothering me. Okay. So I will continue. Kind of close that a little bit more. I will continue clip clipping this around carefully, making sure it's looking good, making sure everything's even. Okay, and again, I'll show you this corner how I do it. So I will hold this down this way, okay, then, let me see if I can get this angle, okay, so I'm working on this side, I will hold this side down, I will put my, the tip of my finger right against this line where this seam would be, right, and then I would just bring that in, so fold it in, fold in this edge, 
okay, and then fold it in again. And that would give you that nice mitered corner. Now, some corners are more finicky for whatever reason. Some you have to work with more. I don't know why, but, you know, if it doesn't work out, open it again and, and try to do it again until it looks, until it looks how you want it. Okay, and then the last one, what I will do is I will unclip this first one that we did just so I could kind of, maybe even the first two, just so there's space to kind of open this back up. Okay, so again, how it should be looking you have all your binding ready to go you have all your mitered corners with the clips and this is how the bag is looking okay so let's go over to the sewing machine okay so I'm gonna want to change this back out And I'm putting my walking foot back on. Um, it's just preference. I just I'm used to using this more than more than my regular foot, but you can use your regular foot on this part. If you have a Teflon foot, you could use that. Um, but I really don't have any issues with the vinyl. I know a lot of people do, but I have no issues. Okay, so I like to start on one of the corners. I know some people like to start on the edge, but I find that as I'm sewing, the edge wants to shift a little bit. And so when I come back around, it tends to want to bunch a little. So I find that working on the corner first really helps that out, okay? So I'm just gonna go ahead and I took off the clip and I'm just holding it down with my finger, okay? Just so I don't lose that area. And I'm gonna start stitching right here and I'm gonna back stitch. I'm gonna stitch a little bit and then back stitch just to hold this area down for me, okay? So in order to get close enough to do that, I'm gonna take that off so I can get this under here. In order to do that, my trick is using my seam ripper. So with my seam ripper, I will hold the fold down, okay? So, I'll just show you really quick. I don't know if you could see that. Here is my fold right here. And my needle is right be before the fold. So I know this is hard to see, but what I'm gonna do, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to so a few stitches and then back stitch to hold that fold. Okay, and then I sewed up again a little bit. And now I know that it's held down. So now I could raise my presser foot and turn this. And then continue down, okay? Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is start this needle is in the position to go right down along about an eighth of an inch from the edge, okay? So I'm just gonna take off the pins as I go, the not the pins, the wonder clips, and kind of hold it and carefully stitch as close to the edge as I can.
Okay, so as we're approaching this first one, I'm gonna hold it down here and take off the pin so that I'm holding it in place. Then this fabric tends to shift a little, gets just a tiny bit bunched up. So what I will do, it will, I will get that and I will push it under and then with the, the tip of this, I will hold it down. So now my needle is maybe a quarter of an inch away from this. I will move this out of the way because now my foot is holding that down. And I, it's hard to see, I know, but I'm going to make sure that I stitch just like a stitch or two on top of that fold to hold it in place. And then I will back stitch and then go forward again. And then lift this and now I know that it's nice and set. It's being held well because I do a little back stitch every time. So now this is in the position again to continue going. And I, I like to just go nice and slow. Okay, again, we're getting to that area. So I hold it down with my finger. Okay, I get my seam ripper and I carefully press that excess little fabric underneath that fold and then I hold this down okay did a little back stitch and now I know that it's secure and I, I think I went one stitch too over one stitch too many because I want it to be closer to this edge. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna move this back and just do one back stitch. Just to kind of get me where I want. That's better, okay? Okay, and this last corner, see how the fabric tends to want to bunch up a little? It's fine. I just go all the way to the to where it meets and then do a little back stitch. And it seems to look good even though there's a tiny bit of a bend. Okay. I don't know if you could see that there. So what I am when I am doing the back stitching on the corners just so that you're aware, just to clarify. So I stitch down this way, and then once I get to this fold, I stitch right over it, okay? And then I will back stitch, stitch, back stitch, stitch, just to ensure that this fold is being caught nicely. And then I will pivot and start coming this way. So now all that is left, is to cut off the little the little threads that are hanging so they're gonna probably be on the back there's not too many here's one okay so that is the bag and now you can place things inside this is how the finishing looks like you could see the zipper tab, but it honestly does not bother me. There's another way to make this bag to where that is enclosed, but honestly, you're never gonna see that little bit. And this is way easier, in my opinion. So just for size comparison, okay. So this should be about 13 by 10. Yep, 13 by 10. And then my little bag, okay. You can see the difference here is 11 by 8. So this bigger version is 2 inches bigger on each side. Okay. And you could also see the difference between doing the, the lining fabric with a print 
and then doing the strips and the backing and the binding solid versus the opposite. So right here, the lining in the back is solid, but then we did the strips in the back of the bag with the binding, we did that with a print. So you could see the two different you know, ways that you can do it and you can mix it up. You could do, I mean, you could even do both of them prints, you know, coordinating prints would be nice. So, okay, so that is it. I hope that this was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions. Again, I'm gonna leave the measurements, the cutting measurements down below for both of the bags. So this is the small version and this is the larger version. And just for size comparison, this larger version, Oops, I didn't open it all the way. Can fit the larger patterns in here just perfectly. And then these smaller ones I find perfect for like the little patterns, like the Lizzie Kate flip it bits or things like that, the smaller things. So I hope this was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions down below. And I will talk to you guys later. Bye, guys.